So welcome, so happy that you're here. Um, there is the last, very last opportunity for us to sing Easter songs tonight. Let me go back to that first slide. Our sing along for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Here's Christ coming out of the tomb. So um, we're gonna sing some Easter songs tonight. Yeah, Ascension Sunday is on the 13th, I think. Yeah, well, it's not a Sunday. Ascension no, day, day is, yeah. is Thursday. Uh, right. next Thursday. So next Wednesday, we're going to do Ascension stuff, but this is the last time we're doing Easter Tide music. So yeah, Ace and I are so pleased, as always, that you can join us for these hymn sing-along sessions. Many have been posted on my YouTube channel. Just type in Pam Tubbs, all one word, and the channel and the videos will pop right up. So here are the hymns we'll be singing this evening. You'll notice, again, that, that uh, they reflect our last opportunity to sing Easter Tide music, Rejoice <clears throat> Pure in Heart. And a, a couple of these will be new to you, but don't worry, they're short, so <laughs> you won't have much time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, our lectionary readings are from Acts 10. Gentiles receive the gift of the Spirit. They should be baptized, too. From Psalm 98. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Give thanks for God's glory. Victory. Victory. Yeah, Sorry. we usually make a joyful noise. Yeah, from 1 John. Trust in Jesus, who came by water and blood, and be born of God. I think that's supposed to say, to be born. Anyway, John 15. Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another. And that's the big one. Okay. So our opening sentence says, please uh, speak where it says, people, I'll start. We gather to sing to our God a new song. God has done, God mar has done mar marvelous things. things. We gather to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Break forth into, Break forth into, into joyous songs and sing praises. praises. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world, Let and, the its world and its people together sing for together for joy. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is indeed. risen indeed. Okay, so you can go ahead and mute yourselves. Uh, here again is Christ the Redeemer, the Art Deco statue in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, by French sculptor Paul Landowski, to introduce our first hymn, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart. Anglican priest and professor Edward Hayes Plumtree authored the poem he originally named Processional in 1865 for a choir festival in one of England's majestic places of worship, Peterborough Cathedral. It was not unusual for an Anglican cathedral processional to take from 10 to 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and hymns needed to be long enough to accommodate such. Not to worry of the hymn's original 11 four-line stanzas, we'll only be singing five verses. English expat Arthur Messiter maybe it's Miss Ate, I don't know, composed the tune Marion, named for his mother, expressly for Plumtree's hymn. Messiter wrote it in 1883 during his 31-year tenure as organist and choir master of Trinity Church on Wall Street in New York City. The original verse by Plumtree had no refrain. Messiter added, rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing, to echo the Apostle Paul's instructions to the church in Philippi, from Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Paul wrote that verse while in prison. If he could rejoice despite his situation, I think we can muster some joy, don't you? Let's sing. <laughs> Oh, 
Our second hymn is based on today's psalm and King David's charge that we should sing a new song unto the Lord. Now, is it just me or do you also think that the chorister on the far left looks like Jesus? I think. What do you think? The only one with a beard. Uh, tenor or bass? That's the big question. Anyway, interesting. Uh, American composer Dan Schutte wrote the music for this version of Psalm 98. We know Schutte for his hymn, Here I Am, Lord. That's the one that starts out, I'm the Lord of sea and sky. Uh, Schutte grew up in Wisconsin. He became a Jesuit priest when the Roman Catholic Church underwent Vatican II liturgical reforms that, among other changes, instituted the use of vernacular languages in the mass rather than Latin. Schutte was among those who began producing contemporary music set to sacred texts sung in English. Although his intent was to compose songs for use with Roman Catholic liturgy, over time, the songs found their ways into Protestant worship. Schutte currently is composer in residence at the University of San Francisco. This hymn's tune name, New Song, certainly is appropriate. Let's sing. painting The Final Discourse by Italian artist Duccio di Buononsegna, who is considered one of the greatest Italian painters of the Middle Ages. To introduce our next hymn, A New Commandment. The scene illustrates our lectionary reading from the Gospel of John chapter 13 as Christ tells his disciples, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. By this, all shall know that you are my disciples, if you show love one to another. The composer of the tune, New Commandment, is unknown. As for the text, I was fascinated to learn that the words, love one another, appear 11 times in the New Testament alone. 
it's kind of like uh, being in class at the end of the semester. You remember when the professor would review the certain key points and, and he would kick on the podium really hard, giving students a not so subtle signal that this will be on your exam, love one another. <laughs> Keep saying it. Okay. Oh, but let me let me go sign in. Okay. So this new commandment is um, just go with the flow. I think it's not too hard. You'll be able to get it. Sorry, new key. <laughs> I'm going to play that intro again. Here we go. One, two, three. Lectionary reading from the book of Acts gives us our next hymn, Baptized in Water. The hymn text compactly explains the New Testament theology on baptism, being cleansed by Christ's blood for salvation, dying, being buried with Christ, then rising again free and forgiven, and becoming God's children through Christ. Michael John Soward was a British Anglican priest and author who wrote Baptized in Water in 1981. The text was first published in the 1983 hymnal, Hymns for Today's Church, for which Soward was an editor. Bunessen is a Gaelic folk tune that was first published in 1888 as a setting for the carol, Child in the Manger, written by Mary McDougall MacDonald. The tune is named for McDonald's birthplace, guess where, on the Isle of Mull, Scotland. Bunessen is also well known as the tune for the hymn, Morning is Broken. Each stanza also finishes with a note of praise to God. The text is powerful precisely because it is biblical. Let's sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
lovely, lovely hymn. Our next is an old favorite, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Charles Wesley was the great hymn writer of the Wesley family and perhaps taking quantity and quality into consideration, the great hymn writer of all ages. He produced over 6,500 hymns. The youngest son and 18th child, wow, of Samuel and Susanna Wesley. Charles, yeah, no. Charles was a younger brother of Methodism founder John Wesley and Anglican cleric Samuel Wesley, and he became the father of musician Samuel Wesley and grandfather of musician Samuel Sebastian Wesley. Talk about a family legacy. Composer John Zundel was an organist, composer, arranger, and pedagogue. He wrote the tune Beecher, named for his pastor, noted abolitionist Henry Ward Beecher, and set it to Charles Wesley's text for inclusion in his 1870 hymnal, Christian Heart Songs. Let's sing love divine, all love's excelling. not a gorgeous photograph. <laughs> oh, I wish my backyard looks like this. Actually, our backyard looks pretty good. It's got some iris that are almost done. We have some gorgeous ruby colored peonies that are in bloom, some bright purple water lilies, you know, those little iris things, and uh, they're just so beautiful. Ah, but these are all bulbs, and that kind of uh, leads into the title of this next hymn. In the bulb, there is a flower. Now, it's uh, written at a time when the author was, quote, pondering the ideas of life, death, spring and winter, Good Friday and Easter, and the whole re reawakening of the world that happens every spring. This hymn originally was an anthem titled Hymn of Promise. A composer of over 200 anthems, mostly for children, Natalie Allen Wakely Sleeth was a native of Evanston, Illinois, she began to study piano at the age of four 
and in 1952 graduated from Wellesley College in Massachusetts with a BA in music theory. Choristers Guild published her first composition, Canon of Praise, in 1969, which became the highest selling anthem in the publisher's history. Her first <laughs> composition, that's pretty good. Sleeth had a gift for composing texts on complex theological ideas that nevertheless were accessible to all ages. Um, the tune name, Promise, uh, comes from the original title of Sleeth's 1985 anthem, Hymn of Promise. The piece was dedicated to her husband, Reverend Dr. Ronald Sleeth, who was diagnosed with cancer and died two weeks after its premiere. I was trying to get Ace to look at the chat. We have a chat request. We used to do Hymn of Promise every Easter. Oh, Steve Bookman says, yeah, I know. It's just a great, great him. Um, anyway, so her, her husband, who was a Methodist minister, had uh, asked for this piece to be sung at his funeral. Seven years later, at the height of her career, Natalie Sleeth, age 61, also died of cancer. Initially inspired by T.S. Eliot, the germ of the hymn grew from the idea that, quote, in the end is our beginning, the phrase that begins the second of Eliot's four quartets and the third stanza of our hymn. The hymn text expresses how life moves into death and death gives way to eternity and the ultimate victory comes for those whose doubt has evolved into belief. Let's sing. Promises that the Lord will, quote, keep us till the river rolls its water at our feet, which made me, for some reason, think of Niagara Falls. So here's a magnificent view of the falls at sunset to introduce I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. Francis Harold Rowley was an American Baptist minister, hymn writer, and until age 91, president of the Massachusetts ASPCA. In 1886, Rowley was minister of the First Baptist Church of North Adams. The church was unusually successful in hosting a revival that year. Rowley was being assisted by Philip Peter Billhorn, a young Swiss musician who served as the church's song leader. Billhorn asked Rowley to write a hymn that he could set to music and teach to the revival congregation. I will sing the wondrous story was the result which Rowley said came to him while he was asleep. Bill Horn had been converted to Christianity at age 20. Wishing to use his musical gifts in Christian service, he went on to serve as song leader for early 20th century evangelist, Billy Sunday. 
Bill Horn also invented, I think this, this will uh, be interesting to you, especially Stephen Cook. Uh, he invented a portable folding pump organ in 1885 that became a bestseller with Sears and Roebuck, weighing only 16 pounds, the Bill Horn telescope organ. It was widely used around the world from rustic rural locales to urban street music missions and even by American troops encamped abroad during World War II. There's no doubt that this hymn was played on many a billhorn organ. Let's sing, I will sing the wondrous story. <laughs> evening as always with prayers of thanksgiving and intercession so um i'm gonna holy god in christ you have chosen us to be your friends and to know your will in the world we praise you for Thank all you. the marvelous all things all you are things. doing I around us and, and within and us. us loving god help us to love others as christ has loved us and teach us to abide in your love that we may show that love to the world breathing in breathing your joy, joy and, and peace, peace and, and trust in trust you in your abundant mercy oh god, god. Oh god. We ask we your ask for intercession for you. heather's cousin steve's dad for healthy babies for a brother who's getting better, joy for Stephen's plumbing, <laughs> and for all those whose needs and cares are unspoken here but known by you. We pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit. One God. One God. Amen. 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 And God be with you all until we meet again. <laughs>